So we're ready to hear that story. I'm ready to hear that journey. And uh, while she tells that story, I'll be journeying with her for sure. Okay, <laughs> Lynn. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I was speaking earlier about you have that calling and do you listen to it or not? Well, I had been having and I just been so knowing that I wanted to go, you know, my what I want my life to be but at least to begin taking the first step, but to go around the world and give hands-on aid, really working hands-on with people and, and help in that way too. And I was just seeing what way that would show up and I knew, I felt like Africa I wanted to go to. I met an amazing woman who was a refugee out of Sudan. She actually was an Eritrean refugee, but they were all kept in Sudan. Um, and it, camp where there's 500,000 of them, 80% women and children, and some of them there for 40 years. The UN calls them the forgotten refugees because just aid wasn't getting to them and people were not taking care of them, taking care of other causes. So I got real inspired by her story and who she is, and we won't go down that long road, but it just, I was so gripped by it. And so now she was going to go back for the first time, she'd come over to America at 14, somehow she had escaped and been able to get to America at 14. And now here she was in her 40s and gonna go back for the first time to that refugee camp. And so I had been helping her organization raise money. I personally raised $15,000 for them. And we, I was one of eight people that went over with her. And we um, had a lot of research living up, uh, uh, leading up to that time to make sure that we have our pathways to get to there and give the aid we needed to and also just to make sure that we'd be safe because it happened to be at the worst time in Sudan for an American to go over there no less an mm -hmm. NGO a meaning a, an aid worker a humanitarian yeah. because Americans weren't even allowed to go over there unless you had a special visa as an NGO mm -hmm. and they were you know kidnapping NGOs and killing them you know mm -hmm. so oh great I'm gonna go to Sudan and do that good you know <laughs> But um, I, I did a lot of research and, and found that, you know, if we went in this certain way and with these right channels, with some government protection, that we should be okay. And I was assured by her as well. And so with, uh, there's so much to the story about. I can't tell you every little detail. We'll be here for a long time. <laughs> but what was beautiful is that despite my fear and terror, I just knew the calling was greater. And I just knew I had to go. And in the process of getting ready and going and helping with the organization and doing fundraisers and knowing that we we're going to be able to connect with these refugees and finally be able to bring them some help, it was interesting that, you remember I was talking about those voices and whatever worth issues, it's like they so lessened because there's something about giving and so much giving of yourself. It takes all that focus off the internal stuff and puts it outward mm -hmm. and I just it just felt it was like this flow it was so powerful to be mm -hmm. able to be in that zone we went over there I was terrified because yeah there's people with guns and you know you heard so many stories my mom gave me that like goodbye speech in case I didn't come back oh you know <laughs> I was just like <laughs> oh, <Lordy. laughs> but I, it was such a spiritual spiritual journey because I I prayed every day um, we got really close to the eight of us. It wasn't perfect. There were in, in fights that happened, but um, you know, I got to see countryside. I felt like I'd gone back in time thousands of years. We found our way to these refugee camps, and then here's where it was just absolutely life-changing. And they do say that when you go to Africa, you'll be forever changed. Something happens to mm -hmm. your spirit, and absolutely I felt that way for me too, and I think yeah. anyone who's done this type of work would agree and echo. Yeah. And when we went there, I mean, these, they came racing out of their huts and came running to us and were just laughing and smiling and tugging at us and wanting us to take their picture. And they were so full of life. <laughs> if you saw their pictures, and I don't know if in this video you're able to share some, I can give you some pictures to sure. show. Sure. And I, I will blow your mind. Were... Their spirit's so full of life and love and so connected and so present mm -hmm. and so playful. And you're going, 
they're in the most horrendous circumstances. What they had to deal with escaping from their country to get yeah. to this refugee camp. Mm -hmm. who, so many who died along the way, they're dying of disease, they're not 30% not are getting no food, the mm -hmm. diseased water, you name it. And yet they have these amazing spirits. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I just, I just learned so much from that that they chose so much, and they even echo this through the translators, but they just chose to live right here in the moment. Because if they were to think about the past, they'd want to curl up in a ball and die and make the world go away. If they were to try to think about the future with hope, they would just be give up and be hopeless. But instead, they live so in the now, so connected to each other, and so full of life. Now, let's jump ahead two years later. Mm -hmm. We were able to build a school for 200 uh, girls mm -hmm. and employ the refugees and also teach them crafts mm -hmm. so they could be able to be self-sustaining mm -hmm. and also bring clean water and more work that we're doing. But anyway, it's just it was a fantastic journey, and I want to continue to do that type of work. Oh my gosh, it's not too often that we see people really having that connection to uh, the people who, who she didn't even think in her life she would ever meet. And this, this is the journey. So um, appreciating the journey of Lynn Rose here is something that we all have to be thankful for. And I really want to thank you all for being with us tonight and be able to journey with Lynn Rose. So that um, as you remember the story that she shared with us tonight, you will be able to feel that after all, your life is good or your life is better than what some of those people are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And we have to be thankful each day, have to be empowered each day by, by, by the people around us that no matter, as you said in your message, that no matter where you are, what is important is just, you know, be in the moment and make things happen for your life. It's 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 gonna be your choice, right? Mm -hmm. We only have a choice. I mean, that's and right. the they choice, make the active choice. Yeah, right. the the choice you make is the one you decide about. And when you go forward and make that decision and make things happen, then you are certain with yourself that you're gonna live this life passionately the way you want it to be. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynn. And thank uh, you. we are very glad that you're here. And uh, I want to really uh, thank you for sharing with me <laughs> tonight. This is our gift to me. It's called Simply the Best by Lynn Rose. Uh, of course, I, I have not told you earlier, she is a singer, a performer, and of course, a transformational speaker. And I will give her the floor just to, you know, describe best what she does because I might have not done justice <laughs> on uh, those uh, accomplishments she had. So take the floor, Lynn, tell All us right. exactly what you do so that our uh, guests will be uh, informed of whatever you're doing right now. Okay. Well, well first of all, just this yeah. CD, just, you know, because this, mm -hmm. this is just what I live for. I think you live for it. I love the alignment here. But it's music to motivate, inspire, and connect you to your heart. And that's <laughs> and that's what you know. I, I live for to do in everything that I do, whether that's speaking to someone in my life or on stage or within music. Mm -hmm. So there's you know this is a great way to kick off one's day. So and that is a CD that that uh, came out in 2004. It's been some time now. And you will find out about this at www.linrose.com slash forward slash music. Just go right. to lynnrose.com and then look for music. Click and here. if you want to find out her, her next WOW speaking events and you want to be part of her empowering you know, uh, programs, just go to wowyouraudience.com. Wowyouraudiences.com. Mm -hmm. And actually there you can even just leave your name and email and then you'll get a, a free webinar around speaking authentically, fearlessly, and powerfully. Mm -hmm. And I believe that real transformation happens when it's process-based, when it's experience-based, mm -hmm. and it's very hands-on training, and it's speaking from the inside out. So you really find what your unique voice is and speak it powerfully after these two days. And I'm raising my hand because I have personally seen her, <laughs> been with her, heard her, and felt her. You know, I was dancing with her music. She's <laughs> really got that 
uh, wow power and I dance with her music I was able to video one of that music and I will be adding up a video clip here to show you what she really does as a speaker and as a performer thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for being with the Lanel Connection converting your passion to possibilities and profits thank you so much and see you all next time thank you thank you Lanel <laughs> Take my heart and make it strong again. You're simply the best.